hello pray and share warriors how are y'all doing i am doing great i am very late um i had to i gotta clean my chair out for my cat she's just kind of hanging out come here kitty come here all right now i'm ready i am really running late i Got me a project going this afternoon and I ran out of time. I love projects. I love putting things together and I got me a, <clears throat> for my birthday, I decided to get me a, a plastic jewelry thing that I can hang all my jewelry on since I've started making bead bracelets and necklaces and earrings. I'm thinking about making some to sell too. But I needed something that I could display them on. <clears throat> uh oh, excuse me. That needs to go bye bye. And uh, so I got me something. I think I'm going to have to get me another one because, like, all of my jewelry covered the whole thing. And so I'm going to have to get me another one just to. But it wasn't expensive, it was like $11. So I thought that was pretty good. It came from China. So, anyway, I'm going to get me another one, but I hope you had a wonderful Tuesday today. I did. Um, anyway, sorry I'm running late. I'm going to jump into some prayer, and uh, then we will get into scripture, and tonight, uh, See, glory, honor, and power now and forever. And I was going to share a song. It's a kid's song. I may share it afterwards if I get time. If not, I don't know. I might share it tomorrow. I don't know. All right, let's jump into some prayer. God, we just come to you and we just thank you. You are so awesome, God. And we are thankful that uh, you are on your throne and you are in control. No matter what is going on around us, God, you have got it under control. God, we just need to trust you with all things, the little things, the medium things, and the big things too. God, we just thank you because you are our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector, and you are our shelter in the storm you are our strength and our um courage god you are mighty and magnificent and powerful and you are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness but god you are also loving and kind and compassionate caring patient all of your promises are kept god and all of your prophecies will be fulfilled we just thank you that you called us as your children, God, and we just thank you for loving us. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And we pray for the lost, God. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. We pray that you would soften their hearts. We pray, God, for... Um, the prodigals that they would see where they are and that they would come back to you God that they would repent that you could that you would reconcile the relationship that y'all once had we pray for all the disasters that are going on God I'm so behind today because I just really have been busy I'll get caught up tonight I'm sure Anyway, I just pray for the people involved. I think there were bad storms in Ellis County. I pray for those people from last night. I pray for um, I pray for all the people that have lost loved ones. I just pray that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength, and that you would allow the Holy Spirit to comfort them. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you hear my son in the background, he's watching Phineas and Ferb, and he he likes it. He is quite vocal this afternoon. Maybe he'll start speaking in words. He's nonverbal. Okay. 
So I was listening to this song because of um, Seth. It's called Glory, Glory, Glory. It's a kid's song. It says, uh, both now and forever. And so then, uh, so they were actually giving the verse, Second Peter 3, 8. Well, that might not be the right verse. Hmm. Wonder if it's First Peter. Thought I wrote it down right. I might not have. All right. I don't know. We're not going to start with that verse, apparently. Hmm. That's so weird. Because I know that's what they were saying this morning. Okay. Well, let's start with. Um, John 13, 31. We may just have to move on to Revelation. Oh, hey. I froze in my camera. I don't know what is wrong with my computer. It's like got all this delay stuff going on tonight. Okay, John. I went too far. Went too far over. I'm listening to Reckless Love right now. Uh, John 13, 31. Therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man, now is the Son of Man glorified, and God glorified in him. If God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself, and shall straightway glorify him. So, all, all glory, honor, and power belongs to God and belongs to Jesus. Now, right now, right now, and forever. So, I wish I would have gotten that song done, but I just, I didn't. And I won't be here tomorrow night because it's Wednesday night, so I wanted to get this message done. So, all glory, all honor, all power, now and forever. So let's look at let's look at Luke twenty three forty seven. Now I actually printed these verses off yesterday. Twenty three forty seven. Now, when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, Certainly this was a righteous man. And all the people that came together to the site, beholding the things which were done, uh, smote their breasts and returned. So that was after Jesus. Well, let me, let me skip back up. And this is when Jesus was on the cross. This is the crucifixion. So this is verse 43. Luke 23, 43. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Now that's what he told the thief on the cross. One of the thieves. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And I don't know, I don't know Jewish time clocks. Maybe I'll study that someday. Um, so I'm not sure what hour that was. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the, in two, in the midst, in the middle. The veil of the temple, uh, where the Holy of Holies was on the other side, where you had to, we had no access to God before Jesus died, a priest had to go 
and give the sacrifice for the people for their sins. Well, when Jesus died, he was the last blood sacrifice, so that's not necessary anymore. And we have access to God through Jesus. Okay, and when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend that my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. Now when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, Certainly this was a righteous man. So he didn't really believe who Jesus was until this moment. Oh, I'm listening to Skillet now. Brave. Okay, so let's look now at John fourteen thirteen. Okay, um, 1411 says, Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. And whatsoever you ask in my name, that will I do, so the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if she... And if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide, abide with you forever. And that's the Holy Spirit. They call it the Holy Ghost in the Bible sometimes. It's the same. Okay, so... So this is one about power. So Matthew 9, 8. Matthew 9, 8 says this. I apologize. I am not very prepared tonight. But when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, which had given such power unto men. And this is when Jesus was um, this is when he healed the man that had palsy. Well, let's just get back up to four. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power, hath power on the earth to forgive sins. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go unto thine house. And he arose and departed to his house. But when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, which had given such power unto men. So Jesus had power. He had God's power when he was here to perform many, many, many miracles. Okay. Let's look at John fifteen eight. Well, this may not be a very long little lesson tonight because um, I didn't get to do my music share thing. Okay, fifteen eight. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved. So have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. 
even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. So you know the Father is to be glorified also. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are to be given the glory, honor, and power now and forever. Well, so what, what does that mean? Well, I think it means that we have tremendous respect of God's authority for who He is. He's our Creator. He, um, he sustains everything. Like everything we see around us, He is our sustainer. He is our protector. He is our provider. He is our shelter in the storm. He is our strength. He is where we take our refuge. You know, and so much more. He is the great Jehovah. He is the great I Am. He is Jehovah Jireh. You know, so many things that God is. And He deserves our glory, honor, and power every day. Well, He has the power. We don't. He deserves our glory and honor. He's the one that has the power. We don't have the power. So also, um, Jesus. Jesus is to be glorified. He is our Savior. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the one that defeated death. And He is the one, the only one, that can offer salvation. So through His crucifixion through his sacrifice he paid it all he paid the sin debt for all of us the Holy Spirit deserves uh, glory and honor because there are so many things the Holy Spirit does for us he gives us discernment he helps us to uh, discern whether something is truth or lie or whether it is good or bad he gives us discernment. He gives us conviction when we sin. He is the one that convicts our heart when we sin. He, um, he gives us confirmation about things. He utters what needs to be uttered in our prayers. He um, gives us a connection with each other and a connection to like music or helps us understand the word. There are so many things that he does. So he deserves the glory and honor also now, now while we're here and forever in heaven. So let's skip to, um, let me see if I can find something, not really knowing where it is, just trying to figure out where it is. I kind of know, okay. Okay. The model prayer that Jesus said. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is Matthew 6 verse uh, 9. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. This is God's kingdom. And the power and the glory forever. Amen. So Jesus was teaching his apostles, and this is our model prayer too. This is what we use also. To glorify God forever and realize that he has the power and that it is his kingdom, not ours. So let's move on to Revelation 5, which I read this morning, I think. Revelation 5. Okay.
Okay, I'm going to read all of uh, Revelation 5. That's a good part. It's not a, it's not a judgment part. And I saw the right hand of him that sat on the throne, a book, writ, a book written and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth nor neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, hath prevailed to open the book, and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts, and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand and thousands of thousands. Okay, that's, that's us. That is all of us. That is the saints saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth, such, are, such as are in the sea and all that are in them, heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sit upon the throne and unto the Lamb for ever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth for ever and ever. So that was Jesus. That is Jesus. Jesus is the only one worthy to open the seals of this book and what happens next is not going to be good for the earth because he is going to open the seals and they're going to pour out judgment on the earth so we want to be saved we want to be with Jesus forever we want to be giving him the giving him and God and the Holy Spirit all three, the Trinity, we want to be giving them all the glory, honor, and power now and forever. All right, so that's kind of how I wanted to end that. If I find anything else, I may actually continue this on Thursday, but I don't know. I probably will not. Okay. So I'm going to read what my uh, quiet time was this morning. I love this song. Some of these songs were on my Christian um, 
dancer size list, so it's really hard for me not to get up there and start dancing. Okay, but I won't. Okay, so good morning, God. Good morning, child. I brought you a new day of mercies and blessings of new opportunities to share my truths in the gospel of Jesus, a new beautiful day to get things done and to work for me. And I said, thank you, God, for a new day of mercies and blessings, of new opportunities to share your truths in the gospel of Jesus. Thank you for a new beautiful day and for all my blessings. Thank you for answering my prayers. Help me to get my license and glasses taken care of. Also this week, I need a miracle appointment, God. I do. I need a miracle appointment to get my driver's license renewed because you can't just jump in your car and go and um, walk through the door and get your driver's license renewed anymore. You have to have an appointment. And the appointments are so far out. Anyway, I'm going to call tomorrow. I'm going to see if I can find a shortcut because it's crazy. Okay, so... He said, child, always be truthful and you will be blessed beyond measure of peace and contentment. Many fall into the trap of lies and it is so hard for them to even remember the truth. You see that in many politicians. They actually believe their lies that make no sense. You saw that clearly last year with the disease. I did. A lot of it didn't make any sense. A lot of it still doesn't make any sense. I don't care who says what. A lot of it doesn't make any sense. Just like you have to shut places down, but yet you can have thousands of people coming from different countries that may or may not have COVID. That makes no sense. That makes no good sense. Okay. The ties, the lies keep shifting and changing. The truth never changes, but it's always the same. You can rely always on the truth and the blessings of obedience that comes with it. Child, uh, child, thank you, God, for reminding me of the untruths that I hear, heard last year and continuing this year about the V, about pushing for the V. I am standing by what you told me. I will be obedient. Obedient. Many are dying and being debilitated from it. Um, and that's, like, that's out there. That's out there. That's not conspiracy. That's out there. Um, I won't take it and will protect our son also. God, about today, if it was your plan for me to go today, it would have all fallen into place. I'm going to consider it your protection. And he said, child, I do protect my children when things or events do not fall into place. So many things and events are taking place, child, so be aware, but do not focus on the things that you can't control. Trust me to know that all things will work out for my glory and my perfect timing and will. Everything is pointing to the glorious appearing of Jesus. Share that tonight also. People need to know that it is soon. They need to be ready. They need to, to throw... Wait. They need to know that time is running out. The rewards ahead are so much better than the things of this world. And I said, I see all that you are saying clearly about truth about truth and lies and that time is running out for people to get saved. They think they have years to clean up their lives, but they don't realize how easy it is to come to Jesus for salvation and he will change their desires for the better. The Holy Spirit will guide them on the path of righteousness. They think they need to come perfect, but they need to come as they are. Jesus is patiently, lovingly waiting for all to come. It makes me sad, God, to see, to see them turn away because they can't let go of their sin. And he said, so true, child. They don't know how easy I made it for them. They think they have to be perfect, which 
no one is or ever has been that has come to Jesus. Many were so broken they had no hope like you when you came. They need to know that Jesus is their hope and, and path to heaven back to their real home. All on earth is so temporary and they need to learn to let go of them. They need to embrace the things of eternal value instead. Thank you for meeting me today, God. I love you with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Give my mama and daddy a hug, God. I love you too, child. Now go be obedient to me, child, in all I ask. The reunion will be so glorious, child. So glorious, and many, many look forward to the bride coming. And I said, Maranatha, God, I'm ready. I am ready to go. Okay, how do we want to share our salvation tonight? Uh, glory. Glory, honor, and power. That's faith. Is this really simple? Well, we'll try it. God's simple plan of salvation. We'll try this one tonight. It is by... I don't know who it is by. It's Grace Baptist Church. I don't know whether they did their own. Um, maybe so. I don't know. Anyway. Does it have a prayer in it? No, yeah, it does. Okay. All right. So this is what it says. I'll have to read the part underneath because it says, My friend, this plan of salvation saved me, and I'm concerned about your soul. You can follow this Bible plan and be saved too. I'm, l I'm literally listening to the afters live on forever. You can't, you can't make this stuff up. My friend, I am asking you the most important question of life. Your joy or your sorrow for all eternity depends upon your answer. The question is, are you saved? It is not a question of how good you are, uh, nor if you are a church member, but are you saved? Are you sure you will go to heaven when you die? God says in order to go to heaven, you must be born again. In John 3, 7, Jesus said to Nicodemus, You must be born again. In the Bible, God gives us the plan of how to be born again, which means to be saved. His plan is simple. You can be saved today. It says, How? Question mark. First, my friend, you must realize you're a sinner. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 Because you are a sinner, you are condemned to death. For the wages of sin is death. Romans 6.23 This includes eternal separation from God in hell. It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Hebrews 9.27 But God loved you so much, he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus, to bear your sin and die in your place. He hath made him, Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might be made righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5.21 Jesus had to shed his blood and die, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. Leviticus 17.11 Without shedding of blood is no remission or pardon. Hebrews 9.22 God can commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5.8 Although we cannot understand how God had my, said my sins and your sins were laid upon Jesus and he died in our place. Although we cannot understand how God said, My sins and your sins were laid upon Jesus, and he died in our place. He became our substitute. It is true. God cannot lie. 
My friend, God commandeth all men com, commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Acts 17:30. This repentance is a change of mind that agrees with God that one is a sinner, and also agrees with what Jesus did for us on the cross. On the cross. In Acts 16, 30 through 31, the Philippian jailer asked Paul and Silas, Sirs, what must we do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Simply believe on him as the one who bore your sin, died in your place, was buried, and whom God resurrected. His resurrection powerfully assures that the believer can claim everlasting life when Jesus is received as Savior. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. John 1, 12, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans ten thirteen, Whosoever includes you shall be saved means not maybe, nor can, but shall be saved. Surely you realize you are a sinner right now. Wherever you are repenting, lift your heart to God in prayer. In Luke 8.13, the sinner prayed, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Just pray, O oh God, I know that I am a sinner. I believe Jesus was my substitute when he died on the cross. I believe his shed blood, death, burial, and resurrection were for me. I now receive him as my Savior. I thank you for the forgiveness of my sins, the gift of salvation and everlasting life because of your merciful grace. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So, just to take God at his word and claim his salvation by faith, believe and you will be saved. No church, no lodge, no good works can save you. Remember, God does the saving, all of it. God's simple plan of salvation is you are a sinner. Therefore, unless you believe on Jesus who died in your place, you will spend eternity in hell. If you believe on him as your crucified, buried, and risen Savior, you receive forgiveness for all of your sins and his gift of eternal salvation by faith. You say, surely it cannot be that simple. Yes, that simple. It is scriptural. It is God's plan. My friend, believe on Jesus and receive him as Savior today. If his plan is not perfectly clear, read this tract over and over again without laying it down until you understand it. Your soul is worth more than all the world. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? And that is Mark 8.36. Be sure you are saved. If you lose your soul, you miss heaven and lose all. Please let God save you this very moment. God's power will save you, keep you saved, and enable you to live a victorious Christian life. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with temptation also make a way of escape, that ye may be able to bear it. 1 Corinthians 10.13 Alright, I'm going to call him back in a minute. Do not trust your feelings, they change. Stand on God's promises. They never change. After you are saved, there are three things to practice daily for spiritual growth. Pray, which is talking to God. Read your Bible, which is God talking to you. 
and witness. You talk for God. Ooh, I like that. You should be baptized in ordinance to the Lord Jesus Christ as public testimony of your salvation. And then unite with a Bible-believing church without delay. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. 2 Timothy 1.8 Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. Matthew 10.32 So I'm not sure whether it's this pastor that wrote this, but it's really good. So if you accepted Jesus as your Savior, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. The angels are rejoicing, and your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And I want to read one more thing that God told me to read, and that is the glorious appearing of Jesus in 1st or 2nd Thessalonians. I think it's 1st. You know, since I've been doing this nightly study with y'all, I am getting to where I know scripture. I know where it is. I know I know a lot more than I did when I started. Okay, you know what? That is in that is not in that one. It is in where is it? I'm not real sure where it is. Sorry, I thought I knew exactly where this was. All right, well, I know that there is one that talks about the rapture. But that isn't the glorious appearing. That might be Titus. I'm thinking it is Titus. We actually had that for one of our VBSs. Uh, two. Ah, oh, there. I found it. I found it. <laughs> I had to remember, but I found it. Yay! It's always good when you find things. Okay, so um, I'm going to start in 11. For the grace of God, this is Titus 2. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. All men, everyone is invited. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Yes, we should. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. So we're looking for that hope. We're looking for Jesus. Looking for Jesus in the clouds. But as we do that, there are a lot of things to do. We don't just sit around our house and go, well, Jesus is coming soon, so I'm just done with my work for the kingdom. That's not how it works. We need to be, we need to be busy about God's business. Okay, so let's read this now. That ye may walk honestly, this is 1 Thessalonians 4.12, that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without, and that ye may have lack of nothing. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus Christ, that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we are alive and remain, <coughs> excuse me, and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. 
For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout in the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. There will be a huge trumpet. So I think it's the trumpet that is going to get everyone's um, attention so that everyone sees Jesus. Maybe the shout from heaven too. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. And in five, but of the times and of the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you, for your, you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh, cometh as a thief in the night, for when they shall say peace and safety. How many times have you heard peace and safety lately? I've heard it a lot. Then sudden destruction cometh upon them. As travail upon a woman with child. And they shall not escape. But ye brethren are not in, the, in darkness. That that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. All right, I'm going to leave it off there. But that is, that's going to be glorious. So God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit deserve our glory, honor, and power. I mean, we don't have the power. Glory and honor. They have the power now. Now you can see their power. They deserve our glory and honor. We need to glory. We need to bring glory to them and how we conduct our lives, how we love others. We need to bring honor to them and how we need to honor them, like with the respect of authority. Yep, that's what we need to do now and forever all right well i think that is all that i came to do i was doing my devotional this morning and this numbers was part of my devotional and i thought ah i know what that is all right the lord bless thee and keep thee the lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee I'm trying to memorize this the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace we need real peace we don't need false peace all right well let's pray so I gotta go feed my child oh no I don't because I fed him late this afternoon I feed him later but I need to call my husband he probably wants to know what's for supper and I made him a big huge salad all right, let's pray. God, we just thank you. We thank you. You do, de you do deserve all the glory and honor, and you do have all the power, God, now and forever. God, we thank you for all the many blessings that you've bestowed upon us. We thank you for protection last night in the storms. We thank you for provision, God, of the things that we need. God, we just, uh, we do pray for the lost, God. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. God, we pray for, that you would soften their hearts. God, we pray for the prodigals to come home. We pray for all truth, God, all truth going on all these states that are doing audits, God, we pray for all truth to rise above any lies, above any deception, God, all truth. We pray, God, for um, we pray for all the disasters. We pray for the storms last night and the damages, God. We pray for these people. We just pray, God, 
that you would be with them, that you would meet their needs. We also pray for the people that have lost loved ones, God. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them, and that they would feel your presence every day. God, I pray for Josie and her family. I pray for Mike and the boys. I pray for um, protection and provision and blessings. I pray for guidance. Just pray, God, for a few unspoken requests, God, that you and I know. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, my friends. Uh, much love, my praying share warriors, much love. I'm probably never going to be good at this. And uh, cyber hugs. Until I see you again, good night.